Hi, this is Stu with Your Turn Go, and we're here at Game Night in beautiful St. Louis, Missouri, and we're going to do an unboxing for Star Wars Armada. This is a massive box, just first right out of the gate. I mean, even though these ships look kind of small here, like the Corvette, which is a massive ship in, in the X-Wing here, is incredibly tiny here, just an Armada. But then we've got this beautiful artwork here of an awesome space battle happening. We've got the sides, more space battles, and on the back, We've got everything that you're going to come to love. We've got these cardboard inserts. We've got shield tokens everywhere. We've got markers. We've got asteroids. We've got movement templates. Everything you've come to know and love about Fantasy Flight games, it's in here, and it's going great. I got a chance to demo this just a little while ago, and honestly, this feels like a culmination of what they've been doing here in trying to reconfigure about how to make star and naval ship kind of games work, so to speak. So let's go ahead and get this guy open. Something to note is that they, uh, Fantasy Flight did, I guess, finally get caught up here with it. The Disney logo is now starting to appear on the box, on the boxes and their videos and all their uh, kind of good trademark kind of stuff here. So, and of course, do credit here, game design by Jane, uh, James Nippon. I'm reading this upside down, so I'm sorry. And Christian T. Peterson. So, great job, guys. This must be a real treat for you guys to, to witness here. Oh, that comes up way, way nicer, way more smooth than uh, with Imperial Assault did last time. All right, so we've got lear a learn to play guide. Sheets of, of course, our ever faithful cardboard cutouts. We've got the base here for the Victory Class Star Destroyer, as well as this little swoopy template. We've got a pack of cards, like for the X-Wing Squadron, where we have things like their movement, their hull points, their squad fighter damage, and their capital ship damage, as well as special rules, artwork that you may have been familiar with here if you've been playing in X-Wing or in any other uh, uh, Fantasy Flight's Star Wars games. We've got everything we need to make order token uh, little guys, as well as the movement template set. Now this guy is going to be latched together here to make a little clicky clack kind of thing so that people can kind of zigzag through the battlefield. And that's kind of nice to help kind of add a little bit of agility to these normally ponderous kind of ships. And speaking of, here is the large capital ship cards. We've got hull points, we've got fighter defense dice, some stats for command, squadron, and engineering, various actions they can take, and when you move a certain speed, this is interesting. You don't just simply move a speed, you get to move that many segments on the marker and get to make this number of clicks along the radius of the marker. So you can see that at one, sure, he's only moving one, but he has an incredible amount of agility there being able to move through. And of course we've got shield values on all four directions as well as the dice that they can roll. We've got dice and pegs. So you can see three kinds of dice, black, red, and blue. We have oh, masses of teeny tiny little fighters. Uh, the starfighters are unpainted, but it shouldn't be too much, at this scale, it shouldn't be too much of a hassle if you want to paint them. It shouldn't be too much of a challenge. And they look actually pretty well at this scale here, just unpainted, honestly, which is probably what they chose to do it. And it looks like we've got, a just by looking at it, it looks like it's a damage deck. So we've got a compartment fire here. That sounds to be bad. I've got stands, stands, and more stands for, fi for fighter squadrons. Looks nice. And here are the two stands for the Nebulon B frigate and the CR-90 Corvette. Now for those of you who aren't familiar, let's take a look at the actual cool stuff. This is the Victory Class Star Destroyer. Or rather, one of the models of a Victory Class Star Destroyer. Um, this is the smaller of the Star Destroyer classes here. It's not the smallest in the fleet, but it's one of the smaller ones. The Imperial Star Destroyer was really, uh, was leaked earlier here. It's going to be actually huge. It's going to cost $50 when it gets released here. But this is a nice, tiny little guy. As you can see, let's flip one underneath here. Oh yeah, here's his fighter bay. Here's the shield. Here's one of the shield generators. 
a secondary bay. This looks really nice. Well done with the weathering and everything. We got that fantastic blue glow in the engines. Now we've got the Heroic Rebellion here. And we'll start with the CR90. This is the Carillion Blockade Runner. Uh, most of you probably know it from the opening shots here of episode 4. It is a light but useful kind of little uh, dodgy guy. Uh, for a capital ship, it's kind of smaller. It's usually used mainly for more civilian purposes than military. Uh, but obviously it can kind of hold its own here in a fight, considering, you know, the amount of uh, points it can, it can bring to, to bear. And then finally, we have the Nebulon B Frigate. It's kind of a weird design for a ship, but you know, hey, it's star, it's spaceships, what can you do? The Nebulon B Frigate has been used for a multitude of purposes, not only to carry fighters, but also to carry staff, have medical bays, and a bunch of other kind of neat, neat stuff here. It's more of an all-purpose kind of capital ship. Uh, than the others here. Mon Cal frigates and Mon Cal cruisers are on the way. Those were also recently leaked at the Gamma Show. So there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff here that's coming up for it. And, oh, it's a beautiful little star field that kind of just gets you the extra void of space kind of feel. Uh, but that is everything in the box, <laughs> but that's not to say that that wasn't a ton. This is an amazing amount of stuff. Uh, this is out right now, so I absolutely recommend you pick this up. Try it out here. It's a much more meditative um, game than X-Wing is, where X-Wing is much more fast-paced, but it does reward a high level of strategy and a good amount of forethought. So for people who like to, you know, plan out games and kind of plan their ways to success, I definitely recommend this. Thanks, everyone. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like us, subscribe.